Uh, my name is Moses Powell. I've been studying uh, jiu-jitsu for the last 20 years. I'm the master for Renda Visitation. Mm -hmm. And at this particular time, I'm a senior master in the art of jiu-jitsu te and jiu-jitsu ru. Dot radio dot net presents to you some of the most deadly jiu-jitsu masters in the world. Trained in the vicious urban inner city street combat system of Sanukas Ru Jiu-Jitsu, this art was created by the legendary Dr. Moses Powell, the father of American contemporary jiu-jitsu and the greatest martial artist of the 20th century. This network brings together four radio shows four nights a week, starting with Tuesday nights at 9 p.m., each one teach one, with the Pia Master himself, Grand Master Urban Muhammad, and his protege, Professor Terence Hale. Wednesday nights at 9 p.m., Modern Combat Masters, hosted by the inheritor of GM Billy Davis Jiu-Jitsu, guru of his own Filipino system, and Sanukas Master, Grand Master Daryl Sargent, and his co-host, Sifu Rosita De Jesus. Thursday nights at 9 p.m. is Professor Tom Curry's radio talk show. A Kenpo master and professor of Sanukas Ru, 20 years law enforcement, senior tactical training instructor for intelligence retired, and author of the official Sanukas Ru Jiu-Jitsu testing and training curriculum. And Friday nights at 8 p.m. is Making the Connection, hosted by the president of DocRadio.net, Grandmaster in the Art of Sanukas Ru and Soke of Kuroshi Kaikan Martial Arts System, and President of the Family of Sanukas Organization, Soki Haisan Kalik, and his co-host, Shihan Farouk Gibbs. All of these shows can be linked to online by typing in docradio.net or listening live at the scheduled time by dialing 646-716-6825. DocRadio.net is also proud to present DocMagazine.net, the world's largest martial art magazine dedicated to Dr. Moses Powell, Sanukas Ru Eye to Eye Jiu Jitsu, Urban Tactical Street Self Defense, and Streetology. Please join our Facebook group by typing in DOCRadio.net and follow us on Twitter by typing DOCRadio.net. Thank you for your support. And in the words of Doc, eye to eye, heart to heart, to the wall and back, us. Lock Talk Radio. Uh, welcome to the uh, Integrity of Sanukas Rule on the DocRadio.net uh, network. Uh, the integrative Sanukas rule on the river that never ran dry, hosted by Chief Professor Shim Yehuda uh, and Professor Yusuf Rahman. We also have our intern that uh, will be carrying the show tonight. Uh, let me see. L.A., are you on the line? Us. Us. Let me congratulate this, this, this strong soldier. So we're just waiting for the uh, chief professor and, and professor to, to tune in tonight. Um, I think we just got them on the line. Uh, chief professor, you on the phone? I think so. Yes. Uh, is, is the professor, you guys, on the same line? No, we was. We was trying that, but it wasn't working out. Okay. All right. Well, um, okay, let me see. I see professor came on. I think professor will call back. So, uh, all right, all right, so Chief Professor, you take over. You're on the air, and you got your intern on the air as well. Eye to eye, heart to heart, to wall and back. Good evening, general public in the martial arts world. We're going to pick this session up tonight with some clarity as far as the footwork of Sanukis. When you start off in this system, you will start off in a, parallel, a foot parallel position. As your overstanding of this of self-defense evolves, then you will come from this straddle position into what is known as the pyramid. The pyramid will evolve into three different applications. It will be uh, pyramid, toe-to-toe, -to -toe, pyramid getting off the line, pyramid and slip. Okay? 
pyramid and disappear. All, all these are core movements within the proprietary system and the proprietary teaching of this system. If you, as a an accomplished martial artist, uh, Chief, Chief Professor, uh, Professor Hockman, I think he just tuned in. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Yes. Um, if you are a um, accomplished master, and one considers themselves uh, adapting uh, this mindset and these applications, you will still have to familiarize yourself with um, getting off the line. Because even now, there are very few individuals who realize that they're still on the line of attack. They may move their upper body, but they still left one leg out in the street. Okay? Um, as you go in, into this launching of a, of a defensive strategy, you are taking something with you. You never go into the motion and leave him whole as, as it was. Okay? So that, that even if you're going by giving him a passing blow, into the floating rib or a passing blow of a um, copper knuckle into the abdominal area or um, a combination of them both. You have to make sure that that happens, okay? Depending on the speed that the attack is launched on will, be, will determine whether or not what you can actually execute and what you can because if your quickness or your speed is, is lacking or you're nonchalant or you uh, <laughs> moving moving like you've got uh, poop in your drawers or something like that, then you, you have a problem. Like the, he said, if you you can study Kung Fu, Yabu, or Doo-Doo, but if you can't block, you're going to get hurt. So, again, with the the study of India, any intellectual creation or the study of any martial art discipline come the fact of you learning how to block and then you knowing that you can make that block work up under any circumstances. You go back to the beginning again. You work out those, what's known in Universal as Tai Sabaki. We call, he called it heel the toe and toe to toe. He also referred to it as sandbag. That lets you know what entry, as far as footing goes, that you are going to enter any given technique. As you evolve or, or your understanding of it becomes greater, you also realize what you can do in toe-to-toe -to -toe that you can't do in heel-to-toe, -to -toe. what you can do in heel-to-toe -to -toe that you can't do in toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Along with that, making a decision of where, did, where is it that you want to be. Do you want to be at the fifth? Do you want to, excuse me, the fist and the wrist? Do you want to be at the elbow? Or do you want to be at the shoulder? And then can you get to those places? If if one does not, cannot distinguish one of those places from the other, then they got another problem. They have to understand the uh, the human anatomy. So there's a, there is a lot built into the system. That's why it's second to none. It can stand on its own merits. It doesn't need any... Uh, trying to give it something that's not a part of it, okay, or, or trying to assimilate it with some other discipline. Sanukas can only be dissected or compared to Sanukas. Yes, you can compare the cobra strike to the reverse cobra knuckle because they come out of the same systems. What does one do that the other one doesn't? If And this is taught to us at, from the puberty, from the child state, let alone once you become uh, proficient, then you have to, to move up to individuals who are larger, quicker, have more agility. This is the only way that you can truly understand what it is that you have, and then applying this with the, with the weight and the speed that comes with it. I was having a conversation with my uh, colleague earlier, and he posed a question. The question was... When you step off in what's considered as lunge position or the thrust position, is the power generated as you get there or is the power generated from the start of the move? Well, 
in Sanukis, that would be a part of the of the move. You you're able to add the body weight to it at any point in the applications. You may decide to uh, get your frustration off, so to speak. Okay, you just carry the person along for a minute just so you get him right. Then you will put the coup de gras to it. Okay. Uh, uh, Grandmaster uh, Sam. Yes, sir. Uh, what is the what is uh, is the difference between what we call universal and Sanukis? In universal, do you have do you have to do you generate the power uh, initially, or do you have to generate the power over over a period of time? You have to generate the, generate the power over over a period of time because uh, a couple of elements. That crescent step that they're asking for, that they cause you to do, that crescent step is, is used to help individuals develop going directly forward as well as keeping their shoulders square and then bringing the power at the end of, towards the end of the actual stride or, the, or their stride or their step or uh, uh, whichever one comes first. If you've got what, would happen, what would happen if, <laughs> if you block the punch before they reach that uh, initial uh, generation of power. You're speaking from, from the Sanukas point of view, right? From the universal. From, from the universal point of view, then they, they're liable to miss. They're, they, they're li liable to not be able to control the energies that are coming out because it, it's set up as on a uh, one, two, three, as opposed to everything is just one. Don't stop to finish. Uh, uh, what will happen? Uh, uh, what is the difference between what we call universal and generational power, and and Sanukas? Uh Does Sanukas also have uh, a period of time between the time that you initially punch and the and and, and the distributing of the power? No, that that is initially already in there because you're you're doing natural steps. You're not doing. Uh structured steps that cause you to have to step long or step short. That's not to say that you won't ever have to do that, but you will realize in the onslaught and snookers that your body weight is a part of everything that you do. It's the equivalent of, as he said that, or, excuse me, focus is beyond touch, whereas in universal, focus is the person throwing the strike and then them not making contact with the subject. That's not, that's not how it's taught. Within this business, in your, uh, excuse me, uh, Grandmaster. In in Universal, they say that the power comes from the moving of the hip. I you say something about body weight. Is there a difference between uh, movement of the hip to draw power and body weight? Yes, there is a difference. If you, the drawing power from the hips means it's coming up from the floor as kinetic energy. Body weight. All you need to do is lower your height. And you're lowering your height, and you've also chosen a target. A good analogy would be, let's say, the bombs that they had in World War One and Two, and the bombs that they have nowadays. The smart, they call them smart bombs. They come with a, with a camera already on it. So you know exactly, can, you can guide the bomb exactly where you want it to go, and you have no collateral damage other than what's, unless you intended for it to hit where it goes. So your body weight, you're doing the same thing. A person slides to you in, in, a, in a hallway. You're coming down a corridor, and a person slides up to you. Well, you've got very little room to call yourself generating uh, 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 that long step. So you've got to be able to generate it right there from where you're at and be able to hit, get the money or, or, or understanding where the money shot is. The money shot is right <laughs> just enough for the city, just enough for the city. Does that help? Uh, uh, yes, it does. Okay. Another way to look at this is I was asked a question by my, by my intern earlier in respect to the application of um, Chianagi. They were given the impression that, that Chianagi is a part of the repertoire of this intellectual creation, and no, it's not. Uh, underarm wrist, the founder called the technique underarm wrist hold, okay, 
it also evolved into underarm wrist throw. At any rate, yes, the elbow is back by beside the ear, but you don't go through the armpit and make a circle in order to capture it. You can, you can allow the missile to be launched and just redirect it and change the angle, with, go from toe-to-toe to heel-to-toe, and you are in place already to go ahead and get what you want. Now that the elbow is back to, back beside the head or above the shoulder, you take the free hand and slap the elbow back towards the heels of the person as well as you have their balance broken. So in most of the techniques that you're going to do, your breaking the balance is going to be your mainstay. If you haven't broken the balance or you at least have the touch, then that's going to help you in keeping a sense of where he at and what you want to do with him, uh, whether or not the individual is getting frisky or not. Uh, uh, Glenn Massa, uh I've heard that the, uh, the, the founder Doc say that uh, underarm wrist lock. Uh, uh, what does underarm mean in underarm wrist lock? Underarm means that the, that it's captured from the. You've got the primary hand which initiated the capture, and the whole hand which will execute the hole itself. It will execute the holding the staying in place and your body weight into that particular limb. Uh, is, is, is now the second, not the, is, 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 is the secondary hand that, that uh, initiates the hole, uh, how, how do you attack it? Is it from the front? Is it from the top? Is it from the right, the left? Is it from under? What, how does the founder say you should capture the, hand, uh, the, the wrist in an arm wrist lock? Okay. When you initiate the primary primary hole, you invert the capture. You do not capture the hand because that will be what the secondary hand will, will be going after from under. It will be going after the hand from under and from the outside, not from the inside. So, so you have the inside of the bicep and you have the outside of the bicep. This will be going at as if you were going at it from the outside of the bicep as if you were that the person was trying to make a muscle. And you slid your hand right in between that space and pull, and captured his hand. But if you have your hand on his hand, that means that you have to let go of his hand in order to actually put the secondary hand on. And from that, from that point, he's, he's not going directly backwards. He's going over, his balance is broken over his ball joint. Then when you when you initiate if you decide to initiate the throw, you initiate the turn along with your body weight straightening your arm. You can also initiate the turn and and step back. When you say when you say you initiate the turn and add your body weight, uh, are you turning towards his back? Are you turning You're towards turning. his side? Uh, how how are you initiating the turn? In what direction? You're initiating the turn in a, in a counterclockwise action. Let's say you may, when you initiate the initial hold, you may be facing him at 10 o'clock. You've made the capture. As you complete the final the finalization of the capture, you're turning towards not you're turning 9 o'clock, uh, 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 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock until the throw is complete. Grandmaster and Professor, we got two callers on the line. Can I take some of these calls? Yes, sir. absolutely. Okay. Uh, first call. All right, 2349. Welcome to the integrity of Sanukas Room. 2349, you're on the air. All right, we have another caller. Uh, one second. Seven six four four, you're on the air. Seven six four four? I guess they changed your mind. Okay. Uh 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 Brother Fukan, maybe you can explain to them how they plug into the into the show by 
question one? Well, 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 yeah. Well, actually, if you if you're calling in and if you don't want to talk, if you just want to listen, then you just you just that's it. When you call in, let let it come in, and you're gonna just listen. Now, if you want to talk, then you press one. So if you're pressing one, that means that I'm going to see your number. If you don't press one, I won't see your number. You can just hear the show. I see that 7644 just called back in. Let me bring him on here. Okay. Hello. Hello? How do I? I'm Latham. Yes. Latham. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. we can. Okay, I'm sorry. My first time calling in. I'm trying to figure out how this thing works. All right. Um, so I'm Latham, brother. Um, I'm glad you all have the show. Um, L.A. Uh, told me about it, you know, one of my constituents and one of my brothers. Uh, so I got a question. When the movement, um, a lot of people was talking about this thing called V-stepping. Um, uh, yeah. out, out in Chicago, I asked people, you know, what was Doc movement? They say Doc movement was V-stepping. I, okay, I uh, was... okay uh, V-stepping is what it say, V-stepping. Meaning V, meaning it came from uh, a Grand Master Festival V system. It's called V stepping. That, now, I, where, now where, you, where, where you step in a V, you step in a V. Okay. As you step over the line, you step in a V. That's part of uh, uh, Grand Master V system. That's where did it comes Doc, from. Did Doc do a lot of V stepping? No, it had nothing to do with V stepping. Okay. Okay. And in Sanukis, you step off the line, heel to toe or toe to toe, meaning either your toe is is parallel to his toe, or your toe is parallel to his heel. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, once you step off the line, see you step inside, right? Now your toe is like right next to his toe. That'll put you at the at the wrist. Or that'll put you at the, the, the forearm. If you okay. take your toe and put it at even with his heel, that'll put you close at the elbow. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, I, now so, young man. You go ahead. Uh, yes. Which, which, uh, with this entry of V step, may I ask what was the application that you were doing? Well, there is uh, no V step, Mr. Lucas. They had. Um, some structures out of Chicago had us doing some type of dance where he said that Doc would do the V step, cross the line. It's almost like it's almost like a collie dance where you're but going I'm back. Saying, but I'm it. saying you this: if there is no V step in Sanukas. Right, right. See, I see, but like I said, I didn't know at the time, so that's why I'm asking now because out of Chicago, I was asking that they said, "Yeah, it is." So you know, there's no, there's no V step. It's okay. The punch come or the missile come, and you step either outside the missile way, meaning that your your whole body is on the outside of his shoulder. Okay. Okay. Or you step inside the thing where your whole body is in between is is between his body and that arm that's that's throwing the punch. So there is okay. no there is no nothing. You either step inside where you where you step close inside way where. where where well, you stepping past the punch but inside, or you step outside where well, you stepping past the shoulder where the punch is in the air. It's in the, it, ain't, it ain't nothing. It's right in the, it's in, in in the air. There's no there's nothing okay. in front of it. That's that's okay. that's that's the step. There's no there's no nothing else. That's that's the Lucas. Get okay, off the line. Like, now I know that I see not a lot of Lucas grandmasters do a movement where they don't necessarily move their feet but they kind of move the upper body. Did Doc ever do that? Okay, understand this. First of all, you got your open line. That's number one. I don't care how you do. Okay, you have something called uh, move without moving or step without stepping. Okay, yes, sir. Okay, now you still get up the line. The only difference is you don't really move both of your feet. You want to, yes, you sir. want, you want, you want the trunk of your body at an angle, so you move one foot in order to make that the angle of the, of the body. But you yes, still got to go up the line. And no, okay. and no, at no time do you stay on the line, meaning at no time does part of your body be off the line and part of your body be in the line of fire. At no time. Okay. Some good teachers here. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Well, I, that was, I didn't get the technique that you were doing, though. Um, they, was, um, they were working off the... Um, 
is working off a straight punch. Um, uh, 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 they did two dogs up to, up to the face, um, and they had us do that with the fan block. Okay, that say that say this. That say, uh, uh, um, he said find the target and move the target. Okay. Find the target and move the target, or he said away from. So that means that you're not in you're not in position of the target. You 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 your 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 initial position is away from the target. Okay. So what okay. was? That you so if you're doing fan block, say you're doing fan block, right? Yes, sir. Fan block. All right. So now you 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 move your whole body on the outside of that arm. Okay. You turn your body from from your left to your right towards the arm and do fan block. But both of your fingers on the outside of the arm. Okay. You just turn your body towards the person. Okay, I'm busy. Fan right. block. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions, sir? No, I, mean, I have a question. I, mean, I, 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 I mean, I love what you're saying because, like I said, it's, it's, you guys are needed because there's so much confusion on the movement of what Doc is doing. You know, so everybody got their own interpretation in Chicago. So you guys clarified it for me. I actually wrote it down on paper. Well, it's, this information you will find on, in Concepts 1 through 5. If you have any questions about whatever he's doing, he is the model. He is the model. Okay. Yes, sir. On any materials that the descending masters present have to be within the context and the framework of what he's doing. Okay. Yes, sir. Did you have any other questions? I have a question, Chief Professor. Yes, yes. go right in. Uh, did Doc ever work off of uh, real-time punches? Yes. Who? Real time punches. Yes. Punching. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. As we as we came along through some frustration, we developed this thing called the wind. Okay? You ever been waiting for a train? Mm-hmm. And you felt the breeze from the train coming before the train actually got there? Mm hmm. That's how you know the train coming, right? All right. <laughs> okay. So you know you're not you have to wait. Because <laughs> at, at some point you you create enough uh, uh, skill that you can feel where the wind coming from. So you don't see you don't see the punch when you feel the wind. Mm-hmm. So oh well the fairy the, the wind's coming ten degrees uh, to the left. All right, so if you know it's ten degrees to the left, then you can't move ten, uh, five degrees to the left. You may have to move ten degrees to the right. <laughs> so you don't see the punch, but you know where it is because you you sense the wind in the direction of the wind. Mm. Mm. Yes. That's deep. And that was called wind? What was it called? Wind what? Uh, okay, this is where it came from. We, uh, myself, Grandmaster Sam, and Doc, used to, in the mornings, we buy ourselves. It's really just us two and him. And... Grandmaster Shem, this is in the early 90s, he was already a professor. And I was, I don't know, second, second degree, some of second degree, yeah, I think it was second degree then. Okay. And Doc, we, Doc used to do something and, and, and it goes it goes downhill. In other words, you know, they, what Doc do, Shem, Shem would do, but he, he used me. So Shem used to go, you know, he'd get fired up because he'd deal with Doc. He's come real quick, and most time I, I I I I couldn't get him way around it quick enough, you know. And so that's what we call the wind, where he just he would come, and I would feel the wind coming, and based on where I felt it coming, that's why I move. I have time to say, oh, let me see where the punch is. No, I got hit already. So we created this what we call the wind. Now, 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 what's the drill? What 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 is a good drill that person could do to uh, to there's replicate no, the? There's no drill. It's an honest attack. It's an honest. There's attack. There's no drill. There's, there's sensitivity. Hmm. And and how do you develop this sensitivity? Well, you uh, well, I tell you, I tell you what Doc said to us. If you get if you don't block, you get hit. If you <laughs> get hit enough, you're going out block. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do you think? 
He <laughs> said, if you, get, you, if you get hit well enough, you'll find a way to get around it. Okay. Now, um, when, it, when it first happened to me, I got around, I stepped on his toe. <laughs> and I got around it. The first time he did me, I, I, I stepped on his toe. And he had to move his car away, so he had, to, he had to go somewhere else. But after a while, you learn how to get out the way. You learn what to feel. It, it comes to feel then. You learn, okay, I, I'm looking right at him. I see he's, he, he's moving a certain part of his body. And your body do certain things naturally. Your arm moves in the same direction naturally. So I begin to begin to feel, okay, when I see him move his shoulder, okay, I know he's going to punch. Now I may not be able to, if I wait for him to punch, it may, it may be too quick. So when he moves his shoulder, it creates the wind. And when I feel the wind, I know, okay, the, 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 the arm can only go in a certain direction. From that position of his, uh, he had in his shoulder, that arm can only go in a certain direction. Naturally. Yes, sir. So what I do, I move away from where they can go. If he's on a straight punch, he can, I know he can, because, because of where the elbow is situated, he can't go backwards in, in, in front of a straight punch. He can't go behind the elbow. His arm don't work that way. So he's on a straight punch. I know if I, get, if I get outside the elbow, then there's nothing he can do because I'm away from the punch. So when I feel the wind, I step outside the elbow. One have to spend time in studying the human anatomy. If if you are a student in, in the study of any discipline and you have no knowledge of the human anatomy, then you you got some gaps that you need to fill. Because again, as Professor got through saying, the arm only bend a certain way, the right bend one way and the left bend another way. When you put it in certain positions, you're still only going to get that same action. Okay, if you would your trainer or your teacher or your mentor or master, and they ask you to bring an attack, then you owe it to them for your own development to give them an honest attack. Not not uh, pussyfoot around and stick your hand out there. No, bring it. That way you can get the true, exact, surety answer of what you're looking for. Other than that, it's all chewed up grass and swamp. Um, and when we made the transition to um, Connecticut, that was the last part of the um, the master series, training the trainer and teaching to teach. Um, he introduced a fourth in, another installment there, which was called Claw, Scissor, and well, excuse me, actually ride uh, a ride with him was introduced in Connecticut. Okay, as it, he evolved in it, he added several other motions. So he added the scissor motion to it, backhand down, hit him up, claw. So you come in from toe, heel to toe, to, excuse me, from toe to toe, to heel to toe, to toe to toe, within a matter of seconds. All right? They, um, it has a, a what, what, he, what he called a modified uh, Tenkan. We have to use that word because there are a lot of martial artists that only know it by its terminology. But we use a modified version of it where you don't, it's not an extreme horse and it's not an extreme uh, Tenkan because if you notice with the, with the traditional Tenkan, when you're doing it, it actually put a space between you and the person. And since your legs are longer than your arms and you're trying to use your arms, well, you have to stay within the range, within your range limit, whatever that might be. If you have a range of motion difficulty, then you've got to stay within whatever that range of motion difficulty is. Okay? Outside of that, all of the installments that the founder put into the system, you must do the technique at a certain, certain timing, at a certain space, and, a certain, and, and a, with a certain body weight. Other than that, you will not get the outcomes that you're looking for. No, like when you say he said ten con, when we know ten con is you your outside foot, you make a, a semicircular motion to get from one point to the other point. But yes, say say you don't have the balance to take one one long step to get from point A to point B. Then what you do? You can still do ten con, but how you get it done? Well, you take your inside foot and you put it where it got to go. 
They took, take that right foot and put it where you're going to end up at. Then you don't have to you don't have to have a big enough circle on your left foot because the right foot is already there, ready. Yes, sir. Put the right foot there and you make a little short step with the left foot and then you had ten come. Now there was a um, finding the chi. In the finding the chi uh, 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 clip, he introduces three, not less than three different striking uh, formats and at least two different blocking formats that are inherent to Sanukas. If you, as an honest practitioner, have not adapted that into your repertoire, then, again, you're, you are solely going to miss the things that's going to help you morph into being able to adapt and get this thing here, okay? Um, he's wearing a, a yellow shirt, or orange shirt, however the color shows up for your for your TV with a pair of black pants on. Okay. He also introduced in that particular uh, uh, series rolling rising block, rolling forearm block. Yeah, uh, two blocks for that for that particular entry, and one throw. And the, the, the throw was a uh, 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 underhand uh, uh, lapel throw. All entered from. Rolling rising block or rolling forearm block. So again, every system have movements that are inherent to the system. What uh, and it's not about copying it from someone else. These these came from his head, from Allah to him to us. Now, if we haven't acclimated ourselves with him, then that's why we scratching our butts and our heads trying to figure out now how do I get it off? What, what do I got to do? You got to go back and recycle yourself or, or recycle the material or take you some time and put it into the lesson plan, what you are giving to the attendees or, 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 or your disciples or whatever you might want to call them. This way you're giving them an honest product, and they are getting an honest answer when they ask you a question. But, again, to go back to the disciples, if uh, straddle position, Battle position is a beginner's position, but sometimes you find a lot of masters, they still do it after they have evolved to the master's level, and they're still standing there with the legs straddled. Okay, they, that's, that's them, all right? You need to be able to, uh, uh, a white belt start out that way. By the time he gets to yellow belt, green belt, he no longer is stuck in that static form. He, he already realized that he got to get off the line. And he already, not tomorrow, now, right now, okay? So again, you may have them just do the just do that drill. You may have them do the drill with uh, matador entry block, matador sword arm capture, spear, back fist, right side, left side, off the balls of the feet, stepping, uh, 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 stepping toe to toe, and then stepping heel to toe. So there's so you cannot get away from toe to toe or heel to toe. And if, again, so if you're not getting it that way, and if you want a reference point, go back to the model and look what he's doing. Uh, I hear a lot of people talk about this breathing, uh, the proper breathing. Also, when they talk about uh, uh, chi, uh, the proper breathing. Uh, now, in Sanuka, is unique. Yes, sir. Uh, wait, in the 70s, we had an ex a exercise. Uh, which 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 take on breathing and also take on what they call chi. What she calls uh, uh, finding the chi. You sit down. Some people sit down uh, in in uh, on sit down uh, on the on the back of the the, the instep. Some people sit down with their legs crossed, kind of what's more comfortable to you. And you put your hands in a, in a pyramid, leaning. The, the point of the pyramid down, the, the, the pyramid is not at eye level, it's a little up under eye level. Putting the, the the point of the pyramid down. Now, the exercise is that you picture yourself going through the pyramid, your yes, body sir. going through the pyramid without hitting the, the, the edges. Yes, sir. No, you feel you see your actual body, your head going through the pyramid, your shoulders going through the pyramid, your whole body. <coughs> Excuse me, go through the pyramid without it touching the edges. Yes, sir. 
So, in Tanuki, they have, they have unique ways of getting to what other people do. Uh, uh, other people have ways to do it. Sneakers have his own unique ways of doing it. When they talk about chi or inner strength. Well, yes. So, you would also find that on that same clip that we just got mentioned, uh, it was uh, cut in 1993 at Wells Collide, just before his knee started deteriorating. Um, let's see, where else can we go with this? Let's say fan block, spear hand, pelvis, sword arm, jiu-jitsu arm rule number one. This can be. This can start off as toe to toe and end as heel to toe. Uh, Grandmaster Shen. Yes, sir. Can you can you execute Jesus arm roll num- number one from toe to toe? It's, it'll be tight if you do. You you've really got. To, it's really got to be your technique in order for you to, to be able to do it from toe to toe. Oh, uh, why is it more proficient doing from heel to toe? It's more proficient from heel to toe because where you have to be at as far as the person's elbow is concerned, where you, your body weight can't be in front of him, it has to be above that above that, that joint. And you're cutting down on that joint with your limb as if you were straightening your arm, putting it on a coffee table, or, or, or um, wiping yourself. Uh, they had a dance a long time ago. It was called a freak. And <laughs> not, I'm, not, I'm not being funny or nothing like that. Anyway, let's say you take your right arm and put it against your breast, your, your chest plate. Now, wipe down your chest plate all the way down till you come to the side of your leg. That's going to be the, the, the movement without having the actual arm in front of you. When you put the actual arm in front of you, looking at the bend of his elbow and the bend of your elbow, the bend of your elbow is cutting over, and, and the blade part of your arm is above his. So when you cut down, you're cutting down and around you'll see his body height change depending on where you're standing at. If you're standing too far away, it may not bend at all. If you're standing too close, then you're going to wind up on the, on the, on the bicep or either on, on the, on the uh, ball joint. So, again, knowledge of the human anatomy is paramount. Uh, uh, Grandmaster uh, Shen, when Sorry. you execute the issue of arm number one, number one, what direction is his body facing? His body is facing the direction of his elbow, his inner elbow, so to speak. It would be, uh, face, let's say you're facing him, uh, facing him and you do it to his right arm. His body will be facing extreme left. So does that mean that as you execute the move, his, his, do you see his chest or do you see his back? You'll see his chest before you see his back. And depending on if you decide to stop short, because you can you can enter the same application, just arm rule number one, and break his balance, and then decide to bump him. But if you go too far past, then you can't bump him because you have removed the tools from where you could apply that movement at. Oh, uh, I also hear that people talk about. Uh, the relationship of someone that came in St. Lucas in 534 Atlantic Avenue and someone came to St. Lucas, say, in Atlanta or someone came to St. Lucas in Chicago or someone came to St. Lucas in Florida. That and, has no consequence. And, that has no consequence and, of a win. And, 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 and they make it appear like that if you came in St. Lucas in, say, in 534 Atlantic Avenue, uh, you think you're better than someone who came to look at this later on in, in, in evolution. Well, let but, me... May, may I, let's, okay. In the interim, when he, when he changed the salutation from this oriental bowing to having all of us go down to one knee and take our right, take our right hand and put it on that, on that person's heart in front of them and look that person in, in the eye and they look you in your eye. And if there was a, that person was unable to maintain a, their composure, then he just had you get another partner. But that was to let you know that we were all on the same level. He was the only one that was above us. 
See, Professor, I got a question on that. Um, around what year, or what, or what, what, uh, what, around what time did he did he change the salutation from the Oriental to that? The salutation was changed in '93. Now, my next question is: Now, the masters that came into Sanukas that might have had black belts, let's say in traditional Japanese or Asian arts, when they when they saw that, like, was there any resistance to that, or, or what did that do to their mind when they when they had to, you know, adjust to that? Well, he said he, he said to the, to the group that we are, we are not Orientals, first of all. All right, and quite a bit of the student body at that particular time were of the of Muslim faith. Okay, so that eliminated that already. Plus, we were black, so that was one of the main reasons why he removed it because we it, we have no assimilation with that culture as far as that goes. Yes, we are, we are are doing a salutation. Now it's up to one to have an open enough mind to respect the salutation and what you give. Because I've seen. Uh, I don't know if you've ever met Grandmaster Sinclair. Russell Sinclair, he runs a school called the Iron Octopus. Okay? They use a salutation that's similar to the, to the to people that study in Jitsu. Okay? But they're in, you know, but they study Jiu Jitsu. You see, hey, that's what they want to do. Okay? Um, Grandmaster Kim, the uh, uh, founder of Black Kwando here in, uh, on the East Coast, he used to be a part of the uh, Taekwondo Federation. He uh, um, broke away and started his, and started the Black Kwando Federation. They're, they're still doing the kicks and all that, but they don't use that, whatever. They use a salutation that's similar to the Egyptians. So all of these masters are recognizing that there there is a black diaspora, and, uh, and we must recognize it and find a way to communicate with other black minds, okay? And we can't communicate with other black minds trying to give them cultures and traditions that have nothing to do with them. And I've never had an Oriental instructor. All my instructors, were, were, were they were both black, and there was only two of them. That was Professor Pugh and Dr. Powell. Outside of that, no. Yes, Professor Pugh kept the uh, salutations in it because we're talking about a very earlier era. We're talking about he, he was out of uh, uh, um, fighting concepts pre Sanubis. I mean, excuse me, not, not fighting concept. Self defense complete pre Sanukis. So most of the most of the material that we got from him was very raw. So, now, if you if you're going to give them something, then give them the truth. So there, so therefore, when they meet their brother, they already they, he already know. As a matter of fact. We can go further and say that, well, the founder, he also gave us a handshake for us to recognize our fellow Sanukas practitioner or, or Sanukasan. I won't say uh, uh, just a guy. I'm going to say Sanukasan, all right? So, you know, that's, I'm not trying to. <laughs> but if, if your master has not shared that with you or they weren't paying attention when the lesson was being taught, that's on them. Um, so, uh, also, like I was saying, so, but, uh, what everybody say is, it start with the model. Yes, sir. And whether you, uh, it, it took him 50 years to put the system together. He started basically at 14, and he passed at 64. So that's 50 years it took him to put the system together, the system to evolve. So, it's about... So the initial the initial premise is the system, exactly. and how much you are acquainted with the total system. So if you started in the later years, then you have, on your own have to say, okay, in the early years they taught you straight punch, uh, inside block, outside block, rising block, uh, reverse punch. Reverse punch is you punching with not not the arm or the, or the forward, that he can create the, the front leg, but the arm with the back leg. So this, this is the foundation, as is for you in mathematics. You first learn one plus one is two, two times two is four, <laughs> four divided into 16 is four. Mm-hmm. That's the foundation. So if you got, and then you may learn calculus where they say, 
um, the sine of theta is 1 over the cosine of theta. But if you don't know the division, then that don't make sense. It doesn't make sense to you because it's based upon uh, what you run when you run the arithmetic. Yes, sir. So the same thing is with St. Lucas' rule. If you don't know what a cross body block is, then how are you going to know what Manador block is? Because Manador block is based upon <coughs> cross body block. Exactly. So if you start it <coughs> towards the end of, his, his, of, this, of, the, of the evolution, then <coughs> you have to find someone that knows the beginning because the, the end is based upon the beginning. <laughs> and if you find the beginning, then you have to find someone that understands the end. Or you Professor, have big got pieces a, missing. Professor, we got a caller that came on the line. I want to I want to take this call. We have eleven minutes left. Yes, absolutely. All right, all right. Let's see. Nine two one three. You're on the air. You know what? Excuse me. Nine two one three. Hello. Yes, you're on the air. Don't sir. play with me. Go sit down. Can you hear me, brother? Yes, nine nine two one three. No more. Oh, this person must be a listener. Okay, go ahead, Professor. So, uh, so it's not that whether where you started at is is how much did you uh, how much study did you do, and the system because now the system is complete. So, if you start in the middle and you don't Acquaint yourself with the beginning, you're missing something in the system. You're missing the end, and you're missing the beginning. So it's not about where you started at. It's about how much of the system have you mastered. Yes, sir. So that so that goes to say that the person that's started in self-defense completed and stopped, that's where their knowledge as far as the electrification or the arts of Moses Powell stopped as well. Uh, Chief Professor, in these last 10 minutes, you said, can I, I think, uh, can you tell the audience how many distinct evolutions are there in Sanukis rule, and what did each distinct evolution represent in its creation? Each distinct revolution in its creation meant that this system itself was actually built around Dr. Moses Powell. There was, there was, him with his full range of motion, and then him as he as he got older, his range of motion changed. What he what he wanted to do, and what he and how he had to do an application. Along with that came the lethal, the lethality of the application. The lesser he moved, the more lethal the application was. It, talk about point blank and a dot. Let's say um, his introduction to us of sword arm was from the mindset of uh, from a samurai carries a sword. Am I correct? But we live in we live in the United States. We don't carry swords, but you have arms. So why not teach them how to use their arms as a sword? Now, they also have to realize that in the cutting up with, with the sword, your body weight is also a part of that. You can't just cut with your arms and think that. Um, it's going to do the job because, in actuality, a sword splits. It doesn't cut. It opens things up. So picture yourself doing a uh, sword arm to somebody's shoulder, and, and after you hit him with the sword arm, he look at you and smile. you got a problem. But if you hit him with the sword arm and you hit him with your body weight, let's say you weigh a buck ten, you hit that collarbone with a buck ten, well, you won't have no problems out of it. Because his eyes gonna get big, and he ain't gonna want to use that side no more, and and, and tell that blow wear off. That's if it wore off. So again, along with your study comes you realizing that okay, there is penetration, there is direction, and there is redirection. There is knowing where the body, is, knowing where the target is, and being able to get to it any time you get ready. These are not uh, parts that you have made your own. Then just. Whether the attack comes full force or whether the individual is, is, is faking like they want to come, you have made you making an honest decision when you when you when you click on or when the click click you move on it. 
you're not you're not you're not second guessing it. You already know what what an individual wants, so you so you're delivering as it is. Okay, let's take um, bull whipping hand. Yeah. Bull whipping hand and matador step simultaneously. It puts you at that person's rear with the back of your hand coming to the to the sixth and seventh vertebrae. Now you can also choose to go ahead and do it as a mild shot. But that's not his purpose. His purpose is to make you dissolve right there on the spot. If you, and if you're wearing rings like he did, oh, my goodness, you've got a problem. <laughs> um, let's say thumb cutting. Cutting with the thumb across the throat is the, is the equivalent of pulling out a switchblade. Cutting with the thumb across the lip. Cutting with the thumb across the crease of the eye. Hit them up. Hit them up in the lift noise. So, you know, when you, if you raise, if you take your finger and you put it up under your chin, you'll and run it around the edge of it, just beneath it, you'll find you'll feel some little balls up under there. Those are called lift noise. Attack them, bad boys. You got a problem. But again, the knowledge of the human anatomy is paramount. Because we, there are students that have no idea where their left foot is, let alone where their right foot. So we, so it, we sort of like remove the left foot, right foot idea and say, well, you know what, the foot that's in front. That way it won't matter which side you're doing it on. Have it up the right side, the left side. Well, guess what? In the street ain't no instructions. And you can't fake it till you make it. realizing that this system is second to none. The founder put everything in this system that, it was, that any other system has. Only thing this, that it all pertains to is unique to Sanukis. Yes, you may take this and do it in other, in other systems, but you're going to find that you're going to uh, run into some restrictions. Or they don't want you to do this move. They don't want you to do that move. They don't want you to hit them like that. Well, wait a minute. Did we come here to play tiddlywinks, or did we come here to study a martial discipline? And, that mar- and the study of that martial discipline be- require sincerity, truth, and most of all, answers to questions. And students must ask questions. If your students are not asking you questions, then that means that they know they know what it is that you're doing. Hmm. Where do we go from here? Mat- uh, matador shoulder. There are four matador. Uh, installments. There is matador shoulder, where you're using the actual shoulder to jack the arm up as, as it reaches its zenith on the launch. Okay? There's forearm matador. There's turning matador, uh, in, inside or out. What, whether you turn to, whether you enter it from heel to toe and turn into it and make, it, make his arm cross him, or whether you enter it toe to toe and make his arm go to the outside. Again, these are things that... These are things that we're supposed to know as teachers in this discipline, okay? Because we're supposed to be able to show a student where they're going. Again, and being able to give them the exact Surality answer to the question. I found myself in the street trying to get back to the sidewalk. All these cars are real. They've been road tested. And he was the driver. So now, we can make a conscious decision as far as the curriculum goes, whether or not we're going to unify and teach from one aspect of it all the way to the end, or uh, exercise your, your autonomy because it's your dojo. And, I, and I'm not telling the person because they dojo that they can't teach whatever they want to in the system, but teach it as it is. He said to know to whom you are giving this to and give it up like you got it. Well, the general public has a bad taste in their mouth because they haven't been getting it as as those masters got it. 
our colleague urged us to go ahead and, and post those clips on Dr. Powell so that the general public would know the product that they were buying, regardless if they didn't know the person that was that was uh, the salesman or the pitch man or any of that. So now that you just you just sold us on the idea, give us what we paid for, because we can get chop kicked from uh, uh, boring you down the street here, and I don't mean that respectfully. Uh, yes. Do we have uh, any more time, Lolo? Pukon? Uh, we got two minutes left. Uh, 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 Grandmaster, uh, you can take us out. Uh, we thank you again for the opportunity to bring you some insights on the installments of this intellectual creation. We hope th those of you that come to Sanukis come wholeheartedly and committed with no reservations about the level of commitment that it takes to get this. Because, you, as the man said, you got to want this, and you got to come and get it, because it's not coming to you. Eye to eye, 